Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we travel back to ancient China to experience one of the most imposing love stories ever told, a tale of two phoenixes. This is a story of unconditional love, of the power of connection, and of finding family wherever you are. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to unwind and find comfort in the time and space that we are in right now. Close your eyes and allow your body to sink into the mattress beneath you. Here and now, there are no obligations. There is no to-do list. Right now, allow yourself to rest. Gently close your eyes while lying here with your muscles relaxed, allowing your body to recover. Trust that soon your mind will follow as we dive deeper and deeper into the countryside of China and fall in love with this ancient tale. For a moment, try and picture yourself in a bamboo forest. You are lying in your bed in the center of this safe, calm forest. You are peaceful and alone, and the sky above you is awash with what looks like millions of stars. As you breathe in the fresh air, you can smell the clean, crisp aroma of the bamboo. You can smell the earthiness of the soil at your feet and the leaves that are resting on the ground beneath you. And then you begin to feel the world around you. You feel the breeze as it winds through the tall stalks of bamboo on its way to you. You feel as it lightly brushes over your arms with just enough chill to make the blankets around you feel cozy. And on that breeze, you can smell even more distant parts of the forest. You can smell orchids blooming and moss growing on distant rocks and rainforest plants curled up for the night, waiting for the sun to rise the next morning. Then you begin to hear the noises around you. Crickets sing into the cool night air, filling the whole bamboo grove with their breathtaking symphony. It's like they are playing this song just for you. But that is not the only sound. Above you, in the wind, you hear the bamboo as well. It shifts and tings against one another. Their hollow interior clinking like a percussion instrument. It's a soothing sound, one that makes your heart beat just a hair slower and more intentionally. You find yourself smiling slightly as you listen to them tinging against one another. And then, something incredible happens. A tall stalk of bamboo to the right of you 
begins to sparkle in the moonlight, and as it does, it bends just a bit further than the other stalks of bamboo. It bends down toward you in a magnificent arc, slow and gentle, and as it reaches you, it begins to move at a snail's pace, so softly you almost don't feel it. The bamboo taps you on the head like a gentle forehead kiss from the forest. And as the bamboo taps your forehead, you feel your face completely and totally relax. You stop closing your eyes so tightly, your teeth unclench as your jaw becomes more relaxed, relieving the tension you were carrying there. Your tongue falls from the roof of your mouth and rests on the bottom where it belongs. Then the bamboo arcs back up into the sky. When it comes back down again, it gently taps your chest. A wave of relief ripples across your chest, like a pebble dropping on a still pond. Your breaths become slower now, deeper, more nourishing. You feel your heart slow, no longer beating at a quick pace. The bamboo arcs down once more, tapping your arms, and as it taps both of them, that ripple of warmth and relaxation spreads. Your fists unclench, your arms sink deeper into the mattress as they stop resisting this comfort. They somehow feel both heavy and light as a feather at the same time. Finally, the bamboo arcs down with a beautiful whooshing noise. You can hear the breeze wavering through its leaves as it comes down and taps your legs. Your ankles stop tensing and your feet lie in a natural position. Your thighs and calves completely unwind, sinking deep into the bed beneath you. As the bamboo arcs back up, you feel a sense of calm. You listen to the bamboos tinging against one another, and then you find yourself in the story. The story of Zhou Wenjun and Sima Shangru begins some 2,000 years ago. A dazzling young woman by the name of Wenjun walked around the bamboo forest, holding a beautiful painted umbrella over her head. She was wearing her finest dress, and though this had seemed like a brilliant idea at first, she couldn't help but wonder how much trouble she was about to be in. There was a party to happen at her estate that night, a party where she was expected to be the center of attention, where people from all over would attend to see her in the company of her father, the wealthiest man in town. 
There were rules about these things. Rules on how Wen Jun was supposed to act. And she wasn't particularly fond of them. Instead of spending time practicing singing or conversation or helping prepare for the party so it could be the fanciest, most lavish event the country had ever seen, when June had something else in mind. She had scurried out into the bamboo grove behind her house which itself was hidden by a rainforest of lush, dense trees. It was her safe haven away from the expectations and the pressure of the wealthy society of her town. When her mom had passed away many, many months ago, it was the first place she ran to, looking for comfort. And now, it served the same purpose. Only today, she hadn't expected it to rain. She loved the rain more than anything in the world. She loved the way it felt on her skin. She loved the way it shook the earth awake, filling the air with the earthy aroma of the soil and loam and plants. She loved the way it slowed things down and urged people to read poetry, to contemplate their place in the universe. The rain brought her almost as much comfort as the bamboo forest did. But the bamboo forest tended to get rather muddy on cool, rainy days. When June held her elegant silk dress over her ankles as she scurried toward her estate, using her other hand to hold the umbrella over her face and makeup. If her father saw her in such a state, he would not be happy with her. Tonight's party was to be a party for her, a party where she could meet rich men from powerful families, rich men that she could marry, rich men that would support her. But when June had seen these men before, and she had no interest in them, they mostly spoke of money, a topic that bored Wen June greatly. She wanted more out of life than money, more out of life than living in a fancy palace and being forced to stay out of the rain and bamboo groves. But her father would never listen to such a thing. When she arrived back at the estate, some maids urged her up to her room to clean her up, hoping her father would not see. Fortunately, Wen Jun managed to escape without him spotting her. The maids got her ready again, speaking to her about the many opportunities that might arise that evening. She could find the man she was destined to marry. When June quipped, yes, only if he's boring and my father approves of him. The maids urged Wen June to listen to her father. She had a good life, living in wealth. 
there was no reason to give this up for anything else. Certainly not for something as fleeting as love. Before long, it was time for the party to begin. When June walked down to see the event room full of people in their finest outfits. Quickly, when June was practically swarmed by men, all wanting to flirt with her, wanting to have her hand. When June smiled politely at them and spoke to them, mainly because her father was eyeing her from the other side of the room. When June took a deep breath and told herself she could do this, she was going to have to marry eventually. There was absolutely no denying that. So, the least she could do was try to find someone interesting. For several hours, when June spoke to the men her father approved of, and, one after the other, proved to be a poor match for Wen June. They spoke of money and properties and jewelry, something that greatly offended Wen June. She did not like being looked at like a person who could be bought, exchanged for a life in a palace or a fancy pearl necklace. It made her feel hollow inside. Her father pulled her aside, urging her to continue talking to the men. She had to find a husband, and soon. When June fought tears and excused herself, tired of hearing the same thing from her father over and over again. She didn't know what love felt like. She had heard poems, stories, tales, but she had never experienced it. She wondered if she ever really would. She wondered if it was possible for her. She snuck into a back room, sucking in shaky breaths. She felt the need to escape into the forest, to hide in the bamboo grove. And so, she slowly began to slip her shoes off, ready to escape out of the back door. Only, the sound of something distracted her. In a side room, where the less wealthy individuals were entertaining one another, she could hear the beautiful melody of someone playing the chin, and they were singing. She followed the sound of the angelic voice, her heart beating a little faster in her chest with every step that she took. And as she stepped into a room, she locked eyes with the man playing. To her, he seemed like the most beautiful man she had ever seen. His eyes were amber and so expressive that it felt as though she could see poetry in them. His hair was thick and dark, still slick from the rain. And though his clothes were plain, they suited him, clinging to his muscles in a way that was both regal and alluring. When she locked eyes with the man, 
It was like her entire world shifted. She felt a warmth spiral through her whole body, starting at the tips of her fingers and spreading through her chest, all the way down to her feet. It almost ached how deeply she felt in that moment. And then she listened to the words that were spilling out of his lips, as warm and as smooth as honey. This male phoenix has returned to his old home, from roaming the four seas searching for his mate. Time was not yet ripe. There was no way to meet her. Then, what a surprise. This evening, I come up to this hall, and there's a dazzling maiden in the women's quarters. The room near, but she far. This poisons my guts. How can we entwine our necks like mandarin ducks? How can we flutter about and together soar? Lady Phoenix, Lady Phoenix, come with me and nest. Be supported, breed with me, forever be my wife. Exchanging affection in a physical way will harmonize our hearts. At midnight if you follow me, who will know? Our wings together will rise, fluttering as high we fly. If you are unmoved by my feelings, it will cause me misery. When he finished the poem, he continued to play his instrument, a small smile pulling at the edges of his lips. When June stood in a stunned silence in the doorway, as if she was frozen in time. When he finished playing, he set down his instrument and locked eyes with her. The humid air between them simmered with a spark. The connection that was forming between them. This feeling was unlike anything when June had felt in her entire life. She felt as though some invisible force was pulling her to him, moving her feet to walk over to him, pulling the breath from her lungs. Other people in the room watched as she approached the man. They knew this would be frowned upon. They knew this interaction would never be allowed under her father's watch. That poem was beautiful. The words left her lips before she was even able to think about them. It took Jean Gru a moment to respond because he, too, was absolutely mesmerized by her. He had seen her from afar, red blush tinging her cheeks, her eyes wavering with emotion. Her hair was like silk, trailing down, down her back and around her shoulders, laid out on her pristine clothes that cost more than Sean Gru made in five years. But there was something else about her outfit that intrigued him. The shoe on one of her feet was formal, and the other one was a casual outdoor shoe. 
as if she had been stopped in the middle of changing them. Shangru finally mustered up the courage to thank Wen Jun. It was his first time seeing her in person. He had heard of her beauty, her intelligence, her love of poetry, but he never imagined he would feel this with her. He never imagined he would feel this with anyone. Were you going somewhere? He asked, a question that would be considered incredibly rude under most circumstances. Wen Jun looked to her feet and blushed, not having realized she had walked out in such a trance that she had forgotten completely about the shoes she was changing into. She thought of her answer for only a brief second before she blurted out, Yes, would you like to join me? All Shangru could do was nod in a daze. When Jun led him back through another room, where she put on the second outdoor shoe. She grabbed a single umbrella, put a finger to her lips, and led Shangru outside. It was still raining. A gentleman, Shangru gently took the umbrella from her and held it over her head as she led him into the forest in silence. All the two could hear was the bitter patter of the rain on the soft umbrella over her head. When June felt bad that Sean Gru was getting wet out in the rain. So, though it was frowned upon, she invited him to join her under the umbrella. Shangru felt his cheeks redden with surprise, but he accepted her offer and slid under the umbrella with her. They were very close to each other, within breathing distance, something that would otherwise never happen, since it was against the rules. When June introduced herself, realizing that she hadn't at the start of the conversation, Shangru smirked, telling her that he knew who she was. She giggled at that, having forgotten her standing in the community. Then, rather shyly, he introduced himself. When he said his name, when Jun could hardly believe it, she looked at him in shock and delight. The passion that she felt earlier, racing through her veins with even more icy hot intensity. He was the famous poet, Shangru the poet whose verses she reread so many times. One of the most famous poets in their region, but a poet who earned no money for his work. The country has fallen on hard times, and the arts, while uplifting, were not affordable for many. When Jun couldn't stop herself from telling Shangru how much she appreciated his work, sometimes, she admitted, she even read his poetry in the place that they were heading to right now. 
Shangru was just about to ask where they were going, but suddenly they were there. A grove of bamboo, a whole sea of it, stretching for as far as the eye could see. In the distance, the clouds parted slightly, allowing the moon to blanket the beautiful landscape with silvery light. Shangru gazed over the landscape in wonder, but his gaze stopped on Wenjun, wide-eyed and enthralled with the scenery. There was such awe in her eyes, so much life, so much passion, so much appreciation for the natural world. When she turned and her eyes met his, it was like fireworks ignited in the narrow space between them. Neither of them had ever felt such a strong connection before. Truly, it felt like they were intertwined, like there was a piece of them that had been missing that snapped into place the moment they saw one another. They both averted their eyes to the ground, overwhelmed, their cheeks flushed with color. As they did so, the clouds truly cleared and the rain stopped. When Jun led Shangru to her favorite resting spot, a patch of mossy rocks beneath a towering ancient tree. The bark of the tree smelled like cinnamon and the sage-colored leaves had a spicy aroma that caused you to breathe a little more deeply, to feel just a bit more connected to the land around you. They sat on the rocks, their knees touching, which made the connection between them even more intense. And then, the two began to talk. When Jun told Shangru why she had left the party, why her father had thrown the party in the first place, Shangru hung onto every single word she said. She spoke with such eloquence, such vulnerability, that it stirred something deep inside him. Perhaps it was a desire to be understood, to be seen, to connect with another human on an emotional level in a way that he never had before. Whatever it was, it caused him to lean forward slightly, gazing into her eyes as she spoke. He was mesmerized more now than he ever had been. Then she asked him about his life, about what he lived for, about his goals and dreams and passions, and he told her everything. He had grown up in a poor family, and he had been poor his entire life. It was something he was accustomed to, not an ideal, but a reality. He refused to give up his passion for writing, just to live a life with more things in it. 
when Jun was touched by this, amazed by it. For so long, she had only spoken to people who talked of material wealth. They never talked about passion or nature or poetry. They talked about things, about status, and she was tired of it. For the rest of the night, the two sat on the rocks and talked. They spoke of the nature around them, about how it provided a respite for them, a home away from home, a safe place to go when things got challenging. They spoke of their favorite flowers, their favorite trees, their favorite birds to watch in the morning when the sun was rising. And in the afternoon, when the sun was setting, it was the most magical conversation either of them had had. And then, they found themselves staring up at the stars. They spoke of the universe and the magic in it, about how alone they had felt for so long, and truly, they had. The conversation they shared there, between the bamboo, under the starry night sky was a conversation that healed wounds they had had for years. It was the first time either of them ever felt that they belonged, and it was with someone far, far out of their social class. Finally, when Jun told Shangru how he made her feel, about how she felt free because of his words, free because of this moment they were sharing together. And as she said that, they locked eyes. In their shared look, they saw it. They saw those years of struggle, years of being misunderstood, years of loneliness that led to this moment, led to the sparks simmering in the air between them, led to them moving ever so slowly toward one another, closing the gap that had been tantalizing them all night. When they kissed, the whole world suddenly made sense. All the poems about love, all the songs, all the stories of people doing things for love, it was understandable now. When they parted, they rested their foreheads against one another's. My phoenix, Shangru whispered, his words dancing to her ears. I want you to be my wife forever. When Jun felt a wave of absolute love and comfort wash over her. And I want you to be my husband forever. The two kissed yet again, feeling the years of stress melt away into the ground around them. And yet, there was trouble ahead of them. When Jun knew her father wouldn't approve of Shangru, no matter how much she loved him, but they had to try. When Jun and Shangru returned to the party, where her father waited 
scowling, a worried look on his face. He snapped at Wen Jun, asking where she had run off to. Her suitors had already left without anyone making a proposal. Wen Jun told her father she had been proposed to. She introduced him to Sean Gru, and his face instantly fell. He told Wen Jun she could not marry a man like Sean Gru, a poor man of no means, a poor man who could not support her. Wen Jun told him that she didn't need riches. She just wanted to be with him. She loved him. Her father would hear none of it. He promised her that if she married Sean Gru, she would no longer be his daughter. She would be penniless. Sean Gru felt his heart snap. Wen Jun could never accept such a fate. And yet, she did. She told her father that she would rather be penniless with her true love than rich with a man who is not her soulmate. Her father stood before her, stunned, wondering how this could be happening. So, that night, when Jun and Shangru fled to a nearby temple, there, with no company but one another, they became husband and wife. It was the happiest moment of both of their lives. And though it was the happiest moment of both of their lives, they woke up the next morning without a cent to their names. Wanting Sean Gru to still have time to write, Wen Jun proposed that they open a wine shop to support themselves, just enough to get by. Sean Gru kissed his beautiful wife, appreciating the sacrifice that she was making for him. He had some insecurity about her decision. He wondered if he would be worth it to her. But every single day, he was. He made her feel loved and valued and understood, something she valued more than gold. And though many days they only had one bowl of rice to share, their days were full of happiness. They worked long, hard hours, but they worked together. They were inseparable two phoenixes rising together. Every day was a blessing, and Wen Jun did not regret her decision. From afar, her father watched her for years. He mourned the loss of his daughter, but as he observed them together, his opinion began to shift. The smile on his daughter's face was unlike anything he had ever seen. She was blissful, full of life. She laughed so much, she danced, she sang. She wasn't the girl that he knew before, trapped in their estate. And so, he made a decision. Many years after they were wed, 
he summoned his daughter to tell her that he wanted her in his life again. He would give them money, and they could all live together in peace and harmony. He apologized for trying to stop his daughter from finding true love, the very thing he once had with her mother. When June was relieved to have her father back, they all settled in an estate together. When June and Shangru spent many days out in the bamboo garden, curled up in each other's arms, writing poetry and experiencing true love at its absolute finest. I hope you have enjoyed this story, and it has brought you a night of peaceful, restful sleep. Please, join me again tomorrow for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams. <laughs>